Good morning. If you're watching this, that means the 4th of July has already happened and we survived 20 continuous hours of deafening explosions outside our houses. I hope all you patriots had a great time celebrating our beautiful country. I sure did. Today I have a lineup of four home design programs. One I expect to be awful, two are different versions of the same thing, and the last one I remember from my childhood. Here's hoping any of these are the least bit interesting. Let's get into it. The first one is yet another joint from the atrocious expert software. This one is a landscape designer rather than a home designer, but I figure it still counts. And hey, this one comes in two different versions, 95 and 3.1. I'm really curious what that actually constitutes. I guess maybe one is 16-bit and one is 32, but Windows 95 could run either, so... If there's actually any difference between them, I'll be stunned, but I'm really fascinated to see what they consider a Windows 3.1 versus a Windows 95 version of an application from this era. It promises that planning our landscape could not be easier, although knowing expert software's usual output, I'm expecting that it couldn't be harder. This blurb has some interesting qualities to it. Uh, one of them is this line, available at a price that won't crash your budget. I'm trying to figure out if that's one of those cheap early 90s computer jokes that showed up in cheap software all the time. You know, Big Blue Disc would use that kind of joke. Just mix in kind of a computery word in the middle of something where it doesn't really make sense. Anyway, I wonder how many people actually took advantage of that satisfaction guarantee and got their money back because nobody was satisfied by expert software. On the other hand, a lot of people probably bought it and then never actually opened it. Also, I never noticed this before. Sincerely, Sue and Ken Courier. I'm guessing they're the founders of the company. I should go look them up and see if they're still around in any capacity. Though I probably shouldn't contact them. There's nothing I could say that would be kind. The feature list is pretty impressive at a distance. I don't know about you, but the asterisks here are just making me lose it. Mounds, star. Ditches, star. Photorealistic, star. Okay, what's that going to say down at the bottom? It's just got to say, like, not true. Ah, available on Windows 95 only. Oh, so there are substantial differences. There's a plant care database, which has climate information that's rapidly becoming irrelevant as climate change destroys our planet. Won't be able to grow anything once that. We've seen how their helicopter and walkthrough tools worked in their other apps, so I don't have high hopes for this one. Everybody claimed photorealism at the time. Absolutely nobody succeeded in delivering it, but I'm really interested to see what expert software considers worthy of this badge. Notice that almost everything interesting is only available in the Windows 95 version, so the 3.1 version must be just a completely different application. Now this is interesting. Import images from Expert Home Design 3D or Expert CAD 3D. I believe I did episodes on both of those, and I'm curious what they mean by images. Like, literally just bitmaps? Or are they actually referring to, like, layouts? I mean, consider that unless the program is a complete superset of their entire 3D home design, then how would you be able to make this whole house here without making it in another program and importing it? So maybe that's what they mean. However, I'm kind of wondering if this is just a superset of 3D home design. Personally, I'm looking forward to finding out that this means that the JPEGs just get larger when you drag the slider up. So this thing's gonna be a train wreck. What else we got? These two versions of Super Home Suite are released in 2000 and 2001, so I'm probably gonna run through the first one thoroughly and then just go briefly through the second one and see if there's any obvious changes. There's no blurb, so we're going into this one sight unseen. Sup? And then this is something I had as a child. I actually had my parents buy this for me for reasons I do not know. I was just absolutely fascinated with the idea of uh, home design programs. I, I don't know what did it to me, but I had them buy me like three, and this was one of them. Sierra also had their own landscape design program, and sadly, I don't have that here to humiliate the hell out of landscape design 3D with, so we're just going to have to hope it humiliates itself. I don't think we need to hope very hard. ASMR. Now this is something, a product catalog. Uh, I actually, I don't know if I've had a product catalog from Expert before. I think there was a software one on one of their other discs. This seems extensive, though. They cover every type of software. Lifestyle, education, productivity, McDonald's. Do you think Ronald McDonald helps you do your taxes? There's also, you know, hmm. Hmm. Could expert software really have gotten the Sonic license for something? The rest of this is all trash. And then Sonic. So let's see. Uh, what do we got? Um, oh, whoa. Look at this. The, the index has these pages... Uh, actually stacked on one another. I've never, I've never seen anything like this in my life. This is hard to make, right? I don't remember what this type of book binding is called, but these are all sheets of paper that have been folded in half, right? And so when they manufactured this, 
every one of these is printed on a different size piece. Well, I mean, it's printed on probably a, you know the same size piece of paper, then cut to size, but it's cut it at both ends. The best part, of course, it's bad. It's not good. <laughs> like, this, it's not comfortable or easy to read. It's really awkward. That's right, Sonic CD, I forgot about that. So I guess these folks got the rights to publish Sonic CD. Now this program was still made by Smart Software, which is the company that made the other two, 3D CAD and the home design programs. So I, you know, I'm sure it's still gonna be terrible because I guess Expert is not coupled directly to Smart Software. Just everything I've gotten from them so far has happened to be a Smart Software joint, so. So apparently this is Landscape Design 3D version 5. Wow. They must have really been cranking them out. Oh, I can get WorldNet. God, that was a lot of ads. That was like that was like four ads. Now this is just going ahead and installing the Windows 95 version. I don't know how I get to the Windows 3 version. No one will ever register. Okay, here we go. Okay, so there's a wizard or you can just freeform. Let's see that wizard. So already this looks like it's very similar to the uh, 3D CAD or 3D home design programs. Uh, I'm seeing there's a roof icon up here that makes me think this is a derivative of the same program just with uh, plants added. So we'll run through the wizard here. Yep, this looks very similar. So that wizard didn't really wizard very much. Let's look at one of their pre-made ones. <laughs> Hell yeah. Um... <laughs> I don't know what I expected. I'm trying to figure out, like, what the hell? Okay, okay, so the house rendering is working, if you want to call it that. Well, I just moved a big chunk of the house. It is taking forever to update the house position. Like, it's been grinding here for 30 seconds. Still grinding. Boy, howdy. What could it be doing? Did it crash? Like, is it reticulating splines? What the hell is going on? What a fantastic maiden voyage that was. Let's try again. I'll work on my own since it doesn't make much difference. Let's try a different sample. Okay, so I'm gonna put this in walking mode, which for, duh, yeah. So like, this is a DirectX bug. You know, it's it's gotta be. I mean, I am running on Windows 98. I would think it would work. This is definitely based on the same code as the 3D home design because you can see the roof up there has like exposed inser inside faces and it's just sort of self-intersecting. It's uh yeah, really good skybox out here. You can see. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> it's not that they're it's not that their code for drawing the skybox is bad, right? Like I could understand that. That's hard, and they certainly aren't good at 3D. But no, that's not what's going on, because further up, it looks fine up here, but down here, they just didn't Photoshop the clouds to mesh correctly. I mean, you could tell, if you look at the rest of this, you could tell this is the edge of an image that didn't loop, and so they just uh, sort of clone brushed it and then applied a blur, which is, I mean, you know, who could be blamed for that? I've done that. Usually for shit posts, but I have done that. But they didn't even bother. They didn't even finish it. Like, did the guy quit before he could finish the JPEG? And they were just like, ship it. The rendering here is absolutely atrocious. Nothing works. Uh, these faces are not flipped correctly. Uh, the house is sort of hovering off the ground. Could the software be this bad? Maybe it's just because I'm not running it on actual Windows 95, right? Like, there's no way they shipped it in this state, right? Well, we can put it in wireframe for the 3D view, supposedly, and it's not faster. <laughs> like, I, I get that there's reasons for wireframe other than speed, but I'm just sort of amazed at how much improvement there isn't. Uh, and it seems like it's those all those billboards for the plants that's, that's really doing the damage, because the house itself, uh, I feel like, is not so bad. Like, this frame rate's not really not bad at all. Uh, but as soon as you hit a single one of those JPEGs, you can see it. You can see it just chug. Oh, here we go. View preferences. Oh my God. <laughs> Slow, normal, or fast. Now, you know, something I'm noticing is the ground in the two that we've loaded so far has been dead flat. What's that about? Aren't we supposed to be able to adjust the ground? Here we go. Tool for defining topographic landscape. So let's go ahead and uh, 
let's let's define a topographic landscape over here. Okay, so that's it's define it's making a Bezier uh, curve, um, which is good. It's not just going to be straight sided. That's cool. Okay, so we oh a mound. Oh gosh, folks, we have our first mound. Won't you come over and see the mound? Use negative values for valleys. All right. Well, obviously, I'm gonna immediately try and fuck this up. So let, yeah, let's just you know. Uh, how low can we go? What is the coordinate system for this? And like, how far do these numbers actually extend? Okay, so so far we're at, we're at 50, yeah, 50 inches. So, you know, you know, four odd feet. Now, do we, will we descend into that? No. <laughs> we're just wily coyoteing. There doesn't seem to be a way to, to go up and down. I've tried some modifier keys and, and no dice. And that makes sense, frankly, because I almost feel like this thing doesn't really track uh, 3D fully. So I think maybe the camera doesn't have a Y coordinate. Okay, let's go further. Let's... 100 inches. 300 inches. Yeah! 1,000 inches. Yes! Perfect. Perfect. Oh, we're making a beautiful home. I love how, like, the texture is so distorted that it doesn't look like a hole, really. It looks like a rendering error. Oh, 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 okay. Oh, did y'all ever read the mist books? Atrus would have gone ape shit for this. All right, well, I could definitely confirm that I would have had a blast with this one as a kid, but probably not for the reasons expert software intended. I'm going to put a mound in the middle of the uh, great dismal hole. Uh, okay, I think it just didn't work, actually. Yeah, I think it's just like, mm, no. Yeah, it looks like that doesn't work. Okay, now what happens... If we, God, I'm terrified to do this. No, it's it's actually it's actually doing it. Wow, I gotta say, uh, I didn't I didn't think that was gonna work. And then I moved one tiny vertex of the house, and the program crashed. Here we go again. Now, let's just do the trees. Let's see what the trees are like. I want to see how that uh, growth over time thing works. And it's crashed again. All right, so I'm not even going to say that I did a fair review of this because it just doesn't work. It just doesn't. Now, the question I have is, where's the Windows 3.1 version? Here we go. Prog 3.1. I guess it detected which version of Windows I had and installed the one that was appropriate. Hmm. Oh, yeah, okay. You can tell this is a Win 3.1 app because it's got those weird beveled buttons that kind of kind of went away. And it looks like it's the same program, right? Yeah, like it's similar but different. Oh, okay. But yeah, you can still... Whoa! Okay, so the 3D mode isn't using DirectX, I think, so it's much faster. I don't know if I should have said so. Like, there's no particular reason it should be faster for not using DirectX. DirectX should have sped things up. But it anyway, it's doing something different. Maybe it's WinG. Oh, yeah, that's the Windows 3.1 uh, file picker. Oh. Nice. Wow. I love this car. When you go to move, it decreases the uh, interpolation of the Bezier uh, curves. So right now, at rest, you see this curve here is smooth, which is really hard in 3D. And then when I go to move, it becomes just the control point, so it doesn't have to recalculate all those uh, splines every time it redraws the image. It's actually quite clever. This seems much better made than the uh, Windows 95 version of the program. Yeah, this this looks great. Whoa, okay, yeah, the uh, the helicopter mode's pretty dope. Wait, hang on. Wow, ah, it's hard to control. The <laughs> the near frustrum calling uh, point is uh, perhaps a little bit further out than it should be, so it just sort of bisects the house uh, when you get close to it. Or is that a feature? Because it's pretty cool. Like, look at that. That's, that's fucking rad. Wow, this is so much better than the other program. Holy crap. I think the trees are vectors. This is dope. Yeah, look at that. The trees have uh, have vertices and uh, different detail levels, right? But it looks to me... Oh, yeah, those are vectors. Those, those are probably like Windows vector format or something. This is so much better than the other program. I'm just astonished. I like this. Hey, let's see how that uh, uh, age thing works. Let's, let's turn down the years on these trees. Take me down to six months. Show me the small trees. Man, I was fucking right. That's the same tree. It's just shrunk. <laughs> yes! All it does 
Let's just shrink the image. Beautiful. Well, this is nice. I like this. Oh, there's supposed to be a sidebar over here, but for some reason it won't load. I can't see anything to place anything. Well, that's a shame. You can also do uh, dimensions. Can't argue there. This is better than any of their other software. When did they make this? 1997. I feel like that's later than any of their other programs that I've reviewed. So maybe they figured some things out. What's interesting to me is that the sample plans contained in this software were provided by HomeStyles, the home plans people. So they actually shelled out to another company to get example layouts uh, to put in here. That's, I'm kind of surprised by that. Okay, we can walk away from this one now. I think we've seen what we need to see. I'm really shocked that the Win31 version was so much better. I just did not expect that. Okay, next up, Super Home Suite by Punch Software. As soon as I launched this, I immediately remembered that I had this when I was a kid. Okay, so right off the bat, look at the uh, right sidebar here. It looks like these are prefab walls for entire rooms. Yeah, they are. You'd think that the very first one would be, you know, an empty room, but no, it's not. So this is what I would have expected to be the very first item in the list. And instead, it's all the way down here. And also, these rooms are enormous. So this is 20 by 20. I'm looking at this now. I'm trying to figure out what this is supposed to be, actually, because, like, there's a dangling wall here, and I don't know why. There's, like, two little sort of closet areas. What, what is this prefab for? What are any of these prefabs for? Check this out. Yeah, there's some classic Frank Lloyd Wright. A huge room with just an L-shaped wall in the middle of it. Let's see this in 3D. Ah, oh, God, it goes really fast. Slow, slow, slow. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. Wait a minute. Hang on a second. Oh my god. It's the same program. Look, it's got the little helicopter icon. It's the same icon. All the icons are the same. Hold the phone. The icons aren't identical, but damn, they're really similar. That helicopter is the same helicopter. Plant growth in this one defaults to 15 years, just like it does in this one. Topography tool used to construct landscape topography. Tool for defining topographic landscape. Oh my god. You have to understand what's happening to me right now. I remembered having this program as a kid. I remember this now. I played in this program for hours and hours and hours. I had this CD, right? There's nothing on this that mentions this other company, Smart Software, that Expert got this other program from. But this is definitely a derivative of it. This must have been the same people. Maybe Expert Software went under in 1998 and like sold off the software, you know, the code base and everything to somebody else. But as bad as that code was, I can't imagine anybody else would have picked it up and run with it. Like they probably would have just made something from scratch. I strongly suspect that the same people who were at Smart Software and made a series of terrible 3D CAD programs went on to form this punch software, whoever they were, uh, and continue making 3D software, but they're actually getting better. Yeah, like the it's got all the same feeling to it like everything about it is like the same program but just much better there's no longer holes in the roof but you can see that the roofs don't really fit correctly see right here where the roof doesn't actually fit on the house same problem we saw in the sample files from the other programs but things are definitely much better i mean there's no more flipped vertices for the most part well there are some at the top of this roof line here i guess but at least now the windows are drawing in the correct order, so, you know, the bottom half of the casement isn't, like, flipped inside out. Oof, there is some Z fighting going on. <laughs> yeah, this this is definitely the same grade of software. See, I'll show you why this is so shocking to me, because there's a feature about this program that I remember, and it's still here. This actually has a high-quality rendering mode. We can go up here to View, and we can tell it to do a excellent render. And there we go. Actually a pretty nice render for 2000. I mean, I don't know that professional architects were getting better visualization than this on the balance back then. Oh, holy crap. Check this out. Go to view. 3D framing phase. Look at that. Damn. Now, see, this is actually a good piece of software. Like, I wonder if these frames are legitimate. Like, I'm looking at all this wasted space up in the roof area and going, that seems kind of egregious, even for a roof. 
But I don't know, like if this is all calculated algorithmically, I'm pretty impressed. Oh no, it's not. Oh God, I just realized. Look at that. This roof here intersects this roof here and just goes right through it. This is, um, you know, it's cute, but I, I don't know that it does anything useful for you. Oh, there's shadows? Oh, is there shadows for framing mode? Hell yes, there are. I remember this when I was a kid. I loved doing this. I loved just firing this thing up and putting it in framing mode and just getting these beautiful renders of all these shadows coming off of this, this mess. Awesome. Gosh, it's almost creepy. Honestly, like, I think this is pretty impressive at this point. You know, the fact that it's able to do all this, render all these shadows so quickly and everything on a Pentium 3, like, man, 3D home design really came up in the world. I can't believe that they came from, presumably, 3D CAD, a program that was sold despite being unusable, to 3D home design, a program that was sold despite being pathetic and broken, and actually made it to this, something that, you know, is definitely not tip-top, you know, there's, there's serious problems with it as far as using it as any sort of, like, serious planning guide. God forbid an actual CAD program, you know, you wouldn't want to use the framing from this. It's you know, lethally incorrect. But still, this is a, a pretty impressive uh, distance to have come. You'd think this code base would have just died of the vine at some point, but no. Now this is something interesting. They've got a whole separate program here that's supposed to calculate how much it's going to cost you to build this. Now, considering their framing is invalid, I don't know how I don't know how that's possible. But wow, would you look at that? This is an actual like, gosh, did they license this this control from Microsoft? This looks like Excel almost. Yeah, there's no way this is the least bit accurate, but all the same, like, wow. I guess it's impressive that they tried. I hope nobody ever got duped by this. Now here's something else intriguing. Furniture Design Workshop. This appears to be an actual program for making the objects you can place in the, uh, you know, in the, in the scenes. And so this is essentially a, a CAD program. So they've just sort of included another CAD program with this. We just drag some textures on there. And then when we close this, it'll actually ask us if we want to put it uh, right into the into the thing, so there it is. That was a pretty slick, uh, pretty slick design workflow. I don't know that it's necessary or useful, but wow. And there's something here called real model. Oh gosh, this is for uh, this is for making like a paper craft model. Well, now that's remarkable, man. That's <laughs> that's such an ambitious idea. I get it, but there's no way this really worked. Intriguingly, this also includes uh, what it calls 2D CAD components and suggests in the status bar that you could use them for drawing wiring. I don't know if I think that you could actually do a complete wiring plan or plumbing plan in this program. Like, I think you could, but I think it would end up being really, really awkward. They've added so many nice touches compared to the you know previous versions of this, though. Like, when you move things, you know, it shows you the dimensions as you're moving them. That's really nice. You can construct path. Can you just like, oh yeah, you can just spline them. All right, now we have a path. I'm guessing fencing is equally easy. Unsurprisingly, it lets you just cut right through the house with it. No, no safeguards here. There you go, a whole ass deck. Man, I think, you know, I guess my takeaway from this is that as much as I shit all over the previous versions of this program, I'm now seeing that the problem was just that they released their, like, alpha versions. Now, mind you, it did take them, apparently, like, six to eight years to get it into a usable form. Had they released this in, like, 1995 instead of 3D home design, that would have been much more understandable. So, yeah, like, maybe they're not the best programmers because it took them years and years and years to get it here. But they did get it here, and I am impressed. It feels so weird to see this program rise out of the ashes of my childhood and turn out to be related to something that I had already discovered as a phenomenon and had very deep questions about the past and future of. I asked myself in previous videos, what happened to the people from smart software and, and expert software? Well, it turns out they went places. They actually got better. This was not what I expected. All right, let's check out the Sierra thing and see if it was weirder than I remember. ASMR. Man, this thing looks like it's ancient. It just puts it in C slash BTW rather than in program files. And from the installer, I kind of wonder if this is a Win3 app that's just been republished. Would you like to use 
Specifically, would you like to use your modem to register your copy visual home? I'm going to click yes. So this is not internet enabled. This is 97, 98. This is not internet enabled. It wants to actually dial home to a specific number to register this. Boy, that seems, that seems off kilter in 98. Please don't be the same program. I'll build with room blocks. These buttons, they're beveled, so when you press on them, it looks like looks like you're pushing something down into like a stretched vinyl sheet. Okay, this is a wizard. I want it all. Okay, next step. Let's get a little tutorial here. Like, oh yeah, just plug them together. Okay, so it's just prefabbed a bunch of uh, roughly room-sized rooms for me. Okay. Well, let's 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 give it a shot. Let's let's do what they want us to do. Uh, okay, so let's connect the living room. So there's that's gonna be our house. Place doors. All right there we go. Doors complete. You gotta love that uh, standard uh, like paint shop <laughs> distortion effect. They just had no no compunction for graphic design back then. All right, so I guess we've been working in sort of a meta format, and when we hit this button, it's going to convert all this into the native format of this editor. I realized after a moment that this was the uh, tutorial video, but it's interesting to me that in the tutorial video, the, uh, the the UI had not been finalized, so the top and 3D view buttons are just ordinary buttons, whereas in the finalized program, there are graphical buttons, and everything else is just sort of a little adjusted as well. So this was actually shot before they ever uh, finished the the actual program. For just for just a second, I thought to myself, "Oh my God, this is going to be the same program." When I saw the two side by side windows, but no, it's the only way to make this program. You got to have the two side by side windows. There's no other sensible design. But no, I can tell from the the look of the render, this is definitely not the same software. Man, this looks so much better than the other one. Can I like actually walk walk instead of hovering? Yeah, this is only rendering at 256 colors even though the display supports higher. My god, look at our hell house. Let's just get way up in the air here so we can see the horror that we've wrought. Yes. This looks like one of those container homes that everyone's trying to make now, right? The ones that don't really make any sense but they sure they sure look appealing to certain types of yuppies. See, like, already this program is, like, it's just, even though the other one had gotten a lot better, this program is still just a lot more inviting. That's pretty much it for the program itself, so let's see what their samples look like. There's pretty expansive samples in here, but down at the bottom I noticed these are also from Home Styles, uh, which I think is the same company as the other program, so I, I guess that's just who you went to if you needed example home plans. So I loaded a sample that was called like Lofty Cottage, but that's not really what we have here. What we have are just some, some walls floating in space. You know, it's funny because as much as I dunked on 3D home design, it looked better than this. You know, this is a better made program in a lot of ways, but... This isn't a house. These are just some walls. Maybe this sample just sucks. Let me get a different one. So like, okay, this one. Soaring spaces. Look at that little thumbnail. It looks like some uh, pioneer cabin kind of thing, right? Let's load it. Yeah, what the hell? This is nothing. So let's see. In comparison, this has no ability to do a render. So you can't get like anything better than what you're looking at here for a final image, which is pretty crappy. There doesn't seem to be a roof, which I'm not getting. Like, I don't, I'm not understanding why there's no roofs. There's nothing in the manual about roofs that I can see. And it's just dull. It's just, it's really boring. So you've got like a much more stable program uh, that seems much more solidly designed, but it, just the ultimate, what it accomplishes is not terribly exciting. So between these three, I gotta say, if you need to design a home on a Pentium 3, so far, the best option is Super Home Suite from... As far as I can tell, and against all odds, expert software. So that was an odd video. Um, didn't really expect things to go that way. These, this software is so frustrating to use that I, I didn't actually want to sit there trying all the make walls, make windows, make doors stuff. Uh, it's all pretty much the same. You drag, drop, you click, click. Uh, so what are the takeaways here? I'm shocked that the first two programs actually had Bezier curves for doing uh, this sort of thing. Because 
Those are so much harder to render compared to polygons that I really expected them to just take the cop-out approach. But actually, the renderer in Super Home Suite was pretty clever. And the renderer in the Win 3.1 version of Landscape Design 3D was also pretty clever. I thought the final render... I think the final render in Super Home Suite looks pretty good. I think it still looks pretty good. I just think that the designs it makes are physically impossible. So it's really only good as a style guide. I don't know why it includes all of that bill of material stuff that I'm, I'm absolutely positive is total hogwash. And this thing is just kind of lackluster. Really, I don't get it. The whole, you know, room shapes thing, whatever the hell they called it, I, I'm not seeing the why versus just drawing walls normally. I, I don't really see what the value is. And the rest of the program doesn't make houses. You know, it's funny, I remember when I was a kid, when I was using this program and, and, and a couple programs like it, that I would make, like, a closet, and then I would make it enormous. Like, I would realize later, like, oh, that, that closet was, like, 25 by 30 feet. And I realize now it's because this program renders in such a way that everything feels claustrophobic. I don't know why. These ones actually do a better job, but they're not really all that good for walking around inside the house compared to this one, so... I have no idea why I'm doing reviews of 3D home design software from the 90s. So with any luck, if your life is going the way it should be, that won't have helped you in any way. And despite the crimes of our terrible country, I hope you had a nice 4th of July. Thank you for watching.